Challenge D using big data to ease congestion. Congestion on our roads, we all despise it, right? There's nothing worse just sitting in traffic, wasting your valuable time. Time is money. It's also currently choking Sydney. Currently 15 million daily vehicle trips on our roads. This is expected to increase by 42% over the next 10 years. It's a lot. And in economic terms, it's $4.6 billion annually that's costing the Sydney economy. Um, this is actually going to rise to about $8.8 .8 billion in 2020. Uh, for an economic powerhouse like Sydney, really this is unacceptable. Given that the government has a budget constraint, it just can't continually spend billions of dollars on additional infrastructure. We need to think of something else. One way to think about it is smoothing and tempering demand on our roads. So Stephen, how will we go about doing that? Big data. Panacea to the world's problems if we know how to harness it properly. Consider a congestion problem, for example. We have GPS data from smartphones, traffic light sensors built in the roads, tolling systems, opal cuts, Wi-Fi user data. All of this, uh, and we've got more. However, all this data is useless unless we can somehow integrate it and analyze it to, to form a cohesive uh, form of information. So, and that is the problem that lies with today's siloed data sources. So, now enter Roadrunner. To the everyday commuter, Roadrunner will be just another app. However, behind the interface, it is so much more. Roadrunner will be an end-to-end -end analytics platform designed to tackle the congestion problem. Utilizing machine learning algorithms and built into a highly scalable cloud solution, Roadrunner is intelligence that can gather and process all the data that's available and use it to create a contextualized, tailored solution to the commuter. In essence, Roadrunner is a tool that understands the transport network and helps, uh, helps you avoid becoming part of the congestion problem. So let's take a look at how the system works. So while Roadrunner will obviously factor in obvious data sets such as Google Maps, Weather Zone, uh, Plant RMS Roadworks, in the world of big data, we also have the ability to integrate this with social media. So take things such as Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. These all provide valuable information that, at the user's discretion, can be overlaid on top of the transport data and used to add social value to the options that Roadrunner will provide. And as, us as users opt in and make their choices on the app, data has also been simultaneously fed back into Roadrunner. So what this means is the system is aware of real-time commuter movement, and this data will be tapped into by agencies such as RMS, or Transport for New South Wales, and allows them to become more proactive and responsive to commuter choices. For example, uh, GPS units could be dynamically rerouted to, according to traffic conditions. Demand responsive transport services will see the end of overcrowded trains. And distress signals could be sent with location data to New South Wales Police to ensure that commuter safety is greater than ever before. So by adding this intelligence to the infrastructure network, Infrastructure owners and authorities are empowered to act with far greater agility and speed. Now let's run through some use cases to demonstrate how this platform will work. Luke and Cameron are huge soccer fans and are on their way to Moor Park to watch the grand final. Record crowds are expected and Transport New South Wales has forecasted for terrible traffic conditions. Roadrunner is programmed to recommend public transport and Luke listens to its suggestion. On the way, Luke stops to catch up with fellow supporters at a local pub while Cameron continues to battle through traffic. Luke departs on a special events bus which is using Roadrunner data to avoid the congested area. Luke finds his seat and settles in for a night of fun while Cameron is still finding somewhere to park his car. Cameron runs to the stadium but misses the kickoff. With the aid of Roadrunner and Big Data, Luke met fellow fanatics and enjoyed the whole match while Cameron was late, stressed and further out of pocket due to parking and fuel. Here's a view of the Roadrunner user application. In this scenario, Stephen is notified of a car accident affecting his usual drive to work. Roadrunner has estimated the time of arrival and is subsequently recommending Stephen to catch a train instead, where he can also use a special Roadrunner discount to park his car at a nearby Wilson's car park. During Stephen's train ride, he is notified about the two minute walk from the station to his workplace. As Stephen is a big coffee drinker, he is also notified about the best coffee shops along the way that offer promotions for Roadrunner users. 
Stephen has also opted into um, Roadrunner's additional social networking features. Roadrunner is able to inform Stephen that his colleague Carol is also on the same train and he agrees to meet with her. As Stephen arrives to work, he receives a notification that he has saved $8 that morning while also reducing his carbon footprint and completing additional exercise. Realising the benefits, Stephen opts into changing his travel preferences to catching the train more often. To summarise, Stephen benefited from being a Roadrunner user. He was able to get to work on time, as well as better utilised his commuting time towards his preferences and lifestyle values. Roadrunner has changed Stephen's demand on transportation modes in real time. An overall win-win situation for both Stephen as a traveller, as well as easing congestion in Sydney that morning. So now that you've seen the user benefits, how is it commercially viable? So we envisage Roadrunner to be a private sector initiative. Um, it'll bring together data from readily available sources, um, such as social media, but also through partnering with government. Um, by providing Roadrunner access to its data, government can realise benefits including reduced capex, uh, as there'll be less of a need for additional uh, capacity enabling infrastructure, but also reduced O&M on existing infrastructure. Uh, Roadrunner will also provide its platform to other businesses, uh, such as the coffee shops we saw in Scenario 2, in order to generate a revenue stream. Users who are after a more <coughs> premium, personalised experience can also elect to pay a subscription fee, providing an additional source of income to Roadrunner. So in terms of timeline, um, Roadrunner can start collating big data from the wealth of sources uh, already available right now. Um, we therefore envisage Roadrunner coming alive over the next year or two, um, where it will begin smoothing demand and empowering, a pe empowering people again in their journeys to work. In the future, this will lead to a world of smart travel, uh, where adaptable infrastructure will result in a fully fledged, dynamic, demand-based timetabling system. So to summarise all of this, we've seen that congestion is a major problem for Sydney. It's crippling its economy, providing endless frustration to its citizens, However, through our two scenarios, we've also seen how effective Roadrunner is in using big data to alleviate this problem, whilst maximising social utility. In the first scenario, Luke used Roadrunner to make a more informed decision about avoiding peak demand and therefore making the game on time. He also got to spend time socialising with fans beforehand, something that otherwise he would not have been able to do. In the second scenario, Stephen listened to Roadrunner, thereby managing to avoid a major disruption on the network. Instead of inching along the road in traffic, Stephen was able to catch up with a friend for coffee and still get to work on time. Now the great news is big data is already here. Roadrunner can take advantage of it. We therefore see uh, the, the smoothing of demand um, on, the right, on the road network right away. So everyone, as we've demonstrated, and as this equation shows, big data equals the congestion solution. Let's get this thing up and running now. Thank you very much. I suppose uh, your challenge right there at the end, um, in terms of a solution, um, last September we had a hackathon, so we um, have, have resulted in six real-time road apps being out there uh, as of earlier this year. So um, we're certainly responding to that challenge. So you're spot on in terms of what's needed. So I won't go into those too much except to say a couple of things. Your timeline, that's far too long. You're, you're folks of a generation before me and you need to be moving much faster than that timeline you put up there. Um, these things, as far as I can see, when we get the data out there for you, you need to be able to respond really, really quickly with your apps. Um, that's our expectation. As an agency, we will put that data out constantly for you. It's up to smart young folk to grab hold of it mix it together, do what they want, we'll give you a challenge which is ease our congestion and then it's over to you about how you respond. In terms of the amount of people that might take it up, you probably just want to think also about the behavioural insights and understanding a bit more how many Stevens might jump on the train. So we have some feel of, you know, you put the big challenge at the front about the amount of um, congestion that we're suffering at the moment, $5 billion a year, growing to eight to nine. Think about how these can be used. So your product's out there now, it's a really, really good idea. Um, what else you can add to it is a challenge for you because um, 
uh, as I said, my, my comment about implementation time frame, this stuff is out there. It's moving at a, a very fast pace. As a government at the moment, we're certainly willing to give you all the data and it's how you might want to mix it together with other data that might be available that I haven't thought about is, is the challenge, I suppose, um, to take it to the next level. But well done. Maybe, uh, maybe just quickly build on the point because um, it sounds like there's a lot of those kind of consumer products out there. So I think my advice or suggestion to you would be to actually think about how that could be integrated into this big conversation Australia is having about alternative transport methods um, or for example a Harper review that's just come out from, um, from Professor Ian Harper that's talked about the notion of in Australia us introducing a conge congestion tax, talking about the idea that you know as uh, as taxpayers, we willingly um, you know, um, build electricity plants, build water systems that we all pay for on a user pays basis, but we don't have that same mentality around roads. So it might be how a solution like this that's got a great consumer application could actually have a more meaningful contribution in terms of, of this big conversation and improving the system overall. Um, no, no, I thought it was really interesting. Um, you know, I, I agree with Tim's comments. Just get out there. You know, you could probably give all your day jobs up, um, start on this. You'd be, uh, you know, millionaires in probably weeks. So good on you. And, and can I just say it's a fantastic idea, but be aware of what's out there. Like there is a product called Waze, W-A-Z-E, which Google bought. So if you look at a Google map, and I'm sure you know this, you can tell by red, yellow or green what the congestion's like, and you can see how long a train's going to take, a walk's going to take, and a car trip's going to take. So always be aware of the competition.